Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about Pathfinder 2E and why uh, Pathfinder 2E, the new edition, is so special. All right, why it means so much to the tabletop role playing game industry, why it means so much to Paizo. Uh, secondary, I think more, more than anything else, why it means so much to the entire tabletop role playing game community, the industry, and Paizo. All right, so let's talk about it. So, um, Pathfinder 2E is coming out. Uh, they announced it a couple weeks ago, and there's a lot of excitement surrounding it. And uh, I was just reading Eric Mona. I, I was just reading Eric Mona's Twitter feed, uh, Paizo's Twitter feed, um, and it was showing Eric Mona, the CCO. I think that that's um, Chief Creative Content, cre Chief Content Officer, or Chief Creative Officer uh, at Paizo. And he was um, introducing at Gamma, like the, you know, essentially like the board game industry convention, what was going to be in Pathfinder 2E, and just giving them an idea of where it was heading, right? And he's really talking about the playtest product. Boy, that is a weird concept to me, the playtest product. They're, they actually, it looks like there's actually going to be somewhat of a market for bound copies of a playtest, which is just bizarre. And it shows you how much our industry is changing, right? Uh, just to put this in perspective, man, our industry is changing massively, right? Um, just a side note, Matt Colville just completed uh, Strongholds and Streaming Kickstarter. It came out for $2.1 million dollars. For one source book and some streamed games, gamers paid $2.1 million. I did the math, and these are all my estimates. Wizards of the Coast has never given any numbers on this, right? But yesterday I ran the numbers, and it, and it, it brought forward an idea that I have that I'm going to declare it now. I think Matt Colville's Stronghold and Streamings costs what was raised on Kickstarter for one source book and a bunch of streamed games is more than it took for the entire initial design for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Here's the math. What did it take to build Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition? In my opinion, these are all my estimates. Wizards Coast has never spoken publicly about these. It took three years of design. It took one lead designer and it took eight, uh, eight designers, right? I think they paid the, I'm estimating they paid the lead designer a hundred grand. They paid each designer 55 grand a year. So that's eight designers at 55 grand a year um, for three years. That's $1.3 million. One lead designer at a hundred grand a year, that's $300,000. And then they put on top of that, they put four, I think they, this is my estimate, they put $400,000 up for about 200 pieces of art that went into the PHP, the MM, and the DMG. My estimate is that the entire initial design for Dungeons & Dragons 5e costs $2 million. Now, four or five years later, Matt Colville comes in with a source book and a collection of stream games and garners more money on Kickstarter than it took to design the entirety of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, right? So that, that to me is staggering and it shows you what's at stake with Pathfinder 2E. There is a lot of money at stake and even more than that, there is political, cultural, and social influence, influence being attached to tabletop role-playing games. And this goes back to a point I made on yesterday, Dungeons and Dragons, is the A number one tabletop role playing game in the world. It is talked at a political, cultural, and social level. If you read Mike Merle's streams, you'll see the politics. If you watch Stranger Things, you'll see the culture. If you go to any convention, you will see the social aspects, right? And Pathfinder 2E is right in that mix, right? So here is why I'm so excited about Pathfinder 2E. I was real, I was thinking about it you know, carefully, and I was thinking, what really is Pathfinder 2E? And I can tell you right now, here's what I think Pathfinder 2E is, okay? It is a tightrope act that we get to watch that Paizo is going to be doing over the next year to two years, okay? It is f absolutely fraught with peril, and it acts, and it is absolutely filled with potential, okay? 
So that's the issue is, right now, what can happen with Dungeons Dragons 5th edition? Virtually nothing. They're, they're in, they're, we're going to get to see a new adventure. Woo! You know, like, <laughs> it's not that exciting, right? What can happen with Pathfinder? Anything, anything, right? That's the thing. There's so much potential there. And, um, and so we, and, but also just from an entertainment perspective, it is so fraught with peril. And I'm going to talk about that fraught with peril in a minute, but, but this is important, right? So Pathfinder, the Paizo design team has started walking out on the tightrope. Okay. And it really is a tightrope because if they screw this up, they can, you know, I think they're a little bit, I think Paizo is a little bit in trouble just from an economic perspective, just a little bit. I don't think a lot. Right. But right now, Pathfinder 2E is a big old question mark of do we survive or do we thrive? And if they try to thrive in the tabletop role-playing game industry, they can fall. They can fall off that type rope and be shattered on, you know, on the streets below, right? And, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of this tightrope, you know, stringing across uh, an urban landscape of, of, you know, skyscrapers, right? Just like that guy who walked um, between the, two, the Twin Towers, you know? Um, and so you have this, this issue, right, of, you know, in New York City when we still had those. Uh, I miss them. All right, uh, trying to be respectful there. Uh, so, so you have, you know, th they're walking across this tightrope, right? But here's the thing. God bless them. They attached a play test to this effort, to the 2E effort. And that, that play test means that the entire tabletop role-playing game community can take the line they're walking on and move it. And that is incredible. We don't, it's a tight walk act where Pathfinder 1E is the posted point that is static. The the Paizo, um, the Paizo team is now walking out over the abyss, you know, as they go through the design period for Pathfinder 2E. And the tabletop role-playing game community has the other end and we can walk wherever we want with it. We can take them to a destination they never planned to go, right? Because they're saying, we're listening. Give us your ideas, right? What are some of the things now, because they're opening it up, that means the whole world can answer. And there are brilliant, brilliant people out there with incredible ideas. And if Paizo's design team is willing to listen, okay, there, there's two elements that have to happen. They have to be willing to listen, and then they have to have the courage to actually commit on a brilliant idea that comes in through that channel, right? And so here's the thing. Pathfinder, the Paizo design team, they can, at any point, they can choose to survive and do a complete iteration and stay with what they've already announced. Oh, there's an alchemist? That's a new, uh, that's a new class which has already been in Pathfinder to my knowledge. And there's a goblin, you can play a goblin, which is an old idea that came out, you know, playing monsters is an idea that came out 15 years ago in Dungeons and Dragons, right? Right now, as they're stating, Pathfinder 2E is virtually nothing, right? Their ideas are virtually nothing. Three, you know, three, uh, three, I, three, three small mechanic, you know, three, three incremental parts in the, in the, in the action phase, who, who cares, right? But what can you do, right? What are some of the insane, crazy ideas that you could br that you could bring into tabletop, in, into Pathfinder 2E? I'll give you some of them, right? I'm just going to throw them out, right? Product placement in Pathfinder, product placement in TRPGs. This is, you know, we are some of, the, we, the tabletop role-playing game community, are some of the best storytellers in the world. I can say that now without any hesitation because it's being shown every day through our streaming games that hundreds of thousands and even low millions of people are watching. We are storytellers. We have a platform just like television, just like movies, right? It's tabletop role-playing games are a vector for stories now, right? Well, Hollywood isn't backing down from, from product placement in their movies. Television isn't brought backing down from product placement in their in their shows. Why on earth should tabletop role playing games not have product placement directly in the game, right? And then yet use that money to get art and rules and special you know s special things for our community that we've never seen before. 
why not, you know, right now you can count on one hand the number of companies in the world where people put on their, you know, their pants or their skirt and go to, go to the office and, you know, drink their coffee and go to the office and work a full-time job and get benefits for making tabletop role-playing games. Well, one of the reasons for that is we don't embrace product placement in, in games. That's just one idea. It's off the top of my head, right? And there's just so many. Here's, here's another one. I really feel like right now we have Game Master, we have Player. What about the monitor, right? What about the person who wants to watch and wants to be at the table, but doesn't want to be a Game Master or doesn't want to be a player? What space do we make for them in the game, right? Um, just like all kinds of really, really exciting options. Gary Gygax gave us not the world. He gave us infinite worlds. You know, he is our king, and he calls out from the grave saying, do more, take this, you know, take what I gave you and fly with it, right? And that's just it. That's what Pathfinder 2E, that's where they are right now, right? You can hear the echo of Gary's calls, like, I'm here, I built this thing, make it more than I, than I made, right? Do something great with it, make risks, take risks, do something great with this amazing storyteller platform, right? And right now, Paizo, not Wizards of the Coast, is right there. They're right there, right? They're building that new edition, and that new edition can be anything. It can innovate the form, not just iterate the game. And that's what Paizo needs to decide. Are we going to innovate the form, or are we going to iterate the game, right? But there's incredibly, there's going to be incredible scrutiny around. But now I want to talk about that fraught with peril. What, what's perilous about designing a tabletop role-playing game? Well, there's a lot. You are under incredible sc scrutiny, right? Your team is under scrutiny. Here's a good example, right? Recently, the design team for Dungeons and Dragons added um, Kate Welch. Okay. Now here's what's special about Kate Welch. Kate Welch has never written. Uh, a tabletop role-playing game uh, adventure, and she has never written her own tabletop role-playing game. But they hired her onto uh, the Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition design team, and you know why? Because she's a digital, because she's a strong digital talent, right? She's pure tech. Came straight from um, uh, Penny. From, she was connected to Penny Arcade. She's a visual designer. She has. She does web design, and she does video game design. Right? She's a strong digital talent. Where is the strong digital talent that's been added to the Paizo team? I don't see one, right? Scrutiny on their team, who they're choosing to build this game, right? Then um, you see uh, content, right? What, what content is gonna go in and what content is gonna go out? They've already, they've already said, we are gonna include every single race and class from the old edition. Terrible idea in my opinion. Scrutiny, scrutiny on what the on the content they're choosing to bring in and bring out, right? Uh, con and also, the content. There's so much scrutiny on the content, right? So it's been ten years since Pathfinder won at first edition. Ten years since Pathfinder first edition, right? So now, with you know, with what they're doing, they have to make a decision with every single piece of content that gets pulled out or put into the game, right? What has changed in the last 10 years of, what has changed in the last 10 years? Let me tell you what's changed. The political, the cultural, and the social landscape. Every single piece of content within the game has to be thought of from a political, cultural, and social aspect, right? The norms that were accepted 10 years ago aren't accepted in, in, in America, right? Now, this is completely American. I don't think Paizo needs to be worried about the international market at all. And the reason why is we're just not there yet. The, the inter Basically, to me, the flow is tabletop role-playing games. America makes them. The world consumes them. Modifius is the one exception where there's a really strong TRPG company out there making games that are so strong and so good that America absorbs their content rather than the other way around. So I don't think they, but they need to think about American politics, American cultural norms, American social norms, right? All of that's gotta be considered with every line, right? And it's already started with ancestries over races. They're fully aware of this. There's just so much. The other thing is innovation. What are you gonna innovate? And what are you gonna not innovate, right? The art, right? 
one of, it, I am worried, I'll tell you right now, I am worried about many of the decisions that the Paizo team is already making. All right, they've been using Wayne Reynolds forever, right? Now they're going to Pathfinder 2D and, and their big announcement is, hey everybody, it's Wayne Reynolds. Come on, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, right? I love Wayne Reynolds, right? He's great, he's amazing, right? But you're going to a new world, you're going to a new edition, right? There's a lot of really talented artists out there. Pick one, right? Get a new look. Do something different. Don't just iterate. Innovate, right? In the art as well, right? And and also, honestly, I don't want to mess with Wayne Reynolds' money, right? But, you know, he's so great. Let him go draw something else, right? I want to see him over at Fate, right? Or put him on John Harper's games. You know, something like that, right? You know, it, I don't know. I just really was a little disappointed with that. Um, the the play test the play test model. What do you do with the play test model? What how do you structure that? How do you structure getting the feedback? How do you say? And then when you get it, how do you deal with that? It's so hard, right? These people took the time to read your game and play it and give you feedback, right? What if they bring forward an idea that says you got to strip everything to the roots, right? You have to change, you have to throw away 80% of the content that you've been working on for two years. By the way, there was one of the, the Pathfinder designers who said, wonder what we were taught, walk, working on for the last two years? They kept this thing secret for two years. Two years, and they should have, because because new editions are fraught with peril and filled with potential, right? So, the other thing is, what about the fate of the old content? They've already said we're going to continue to print one e, right? So I'm really worried about a lot of Paizo's decisions, right? Because everything, everything that they've said to this point is iterate, not innovate, and that worries me. But, but. I have hope, and the reason why is I've followed Pathfinder for a long time. On my shelves, you will find the Pathfinder 500-page core rulebook, the NPC Codex, one of the best books ever written in any tabletop role-playing game ever. You will find the the equipment guide for Pathfinder, right? You will find the campaign guide for Pathfinder. Um, the, the, the books that I sold when 5th edition came out that we'll no longer find in my house were the, you know, the Advanced Magic and the Advanced Adventuring Guide. And um, probably about three or four others, but I kept the core so that I always could jump into a Pathfinder game. Um, this is a really, really important time, and I really hope that those that those that those Paizo. I really hope that the Paizo design team listens and that they can hear Gary calling out and saying, "Make TRPGs more. Do something. Fly. Don't walk. Take care."